Welcome to Eurathlon 2015. 16 teams have come together to compete in land, sea and air trials. Inspired by the 2011 Fukushima accident, Eurathlon is an outdoor robotics competition with a focus on realistic cooperative disaster response scenarios for land, sea and air robots. We spoke to one of the judges to ask why this poses such a challenge. We started yesterday with the outdoor aerial robots, which have been flying on the beach and around the building. Today, they're focused on flying inside. The main difficulty of flying in the building is you have no GPS. They have a really weak radio communication with all the walls. It's really a challenge for them to be able to succeed in this mission today. The main goal for today is for the team to be able to fly inside the building, create a 3D map and send that information to the ground robot so they, when they get in the building they know the unobstructed path to the machine room as we call it, where they will have to do their safety tasks, close valves or maybe um, rescue a worker or such on. With this in mind, the teams had to make a lot of changes to their robots. We spoke to the Icarus team to find out what was their biggest issue. Today's task it was very difficult. We were supposed to use our aerial robots to go inside the building and look for people and other things. This is very challenging because inside the building you have no GPS signal, it's really low visibility, it's practically dark, and it's a really confined area, so it's really easy to hit the walls. Uh, we finally came up with the idea to fly around the building and use our thermal camera to look through the window. That doesn't give you a regular image because it's completely dark. It measures things like temperature and we could actually detect things through the window in a complete dark room. Team Ensta are one of the teams competing in the Grand Challenge. We asked them how they were preparing for the big event. The key is communication, but here it's really difficult. Uh, you can try radio, but a lot of people have trouble with it, so we really, really need to, to have a plan for communication between the, the Grand Station. This week will be, has been really challenging for all the hardware and software, and we, I think with the Rathlon we couldn't reach this level of understanding the problem. Ten teams now remain in the competition. We spoke to a judge to find out what the Grand Challenge goals were. So the purpose of the Grand Challenge today is to have air, sea, and land autonomous vehicles operating at the same time. I think it's been interesting to see uh, the transition from the individual trials where the teams are just required to operate by themselves to now try and integrate together to work as a team, so doing the combined land, sea, and air. So it's presented different challenges, communications, as well as the weather has provided different challenges for the teams as well. There are given tasks that have to be achieved, namely identifying and locating missing workers and then securing valves for pipes that may be leaking. So the land vehicle will go in the building, look for the worker and identify a leaking pipe and the undersea vehicle will turn a valve to secure that pipe. At the same time, they have to communicate back and forth for the land vehicle to tell the undersea vehicle which pipe is leaking on the land to secure underwater. The air vehicle also goes to help and locate the missing workers and make a map of the surrounding area. The Eurathlon 2015 competition has been a great success, a multi-domain competition that has pushed outdoor robotics into a new era.